Uh, hello there folks, welcome out then to part two of the Dortmund series where we take a Dortmund side that are, you know, struggling in real life. They're doing okay in some, in that, some areas actually, the Champions League, they're not doing too badly in. But in the league specifically, we're trying to turn them into contenders. And contenders, we have turned them into. Uh, shout out to Bayern Munich, we're stumbling a little bit. There's lots of things to talk about today, I've actually created a list for me to go through uh, about what's gone on since we very, start, very much started the season. I've gone through the entire Champions League group, I thought we'd come back just after that. Uh, so we had an idea of how we did in it. Of course, during the Chelsea series we had, the Champions League was the one thing we were failing at. And... Well, there was a similar story here as well. Uh, we were losing quite badly to uh, Real Madrid and Lazio, but managed to turn it around. Wins against young boys in both games. Uh, a 3-2 victory over Real Madrid, which was a huge moment for us in the, in the terms of the season, right? A really good win for us. Haaland uh, getting the absolute winner in that as well. A Norwegian loving with him and Odegaard on either side of the field. Uh, and then finally, the game against Lazio, it came around. It was an 84th minute Erling Haaland goal that saw us uh, nab victory. Lazio started the final day of the group, uh, top of the group but eventually have fallen out of it entirely and ourselves and Madrid have gone forward. I don't think our, our opponents have been revealed yet uh, for the knockout rounds. No, not yet, but we'll surely find out and I'm sure they're going to be quite tough. There's some teams to avoid and there's definitely some teams that I'd rather face uh, in the next round then. So since we last met, what has happened with the team? Before we talk tactically, before we talk about how we've managed to turn this Dortmund side into a side that currently sit top of the Bundesliga table, you can see 24 points with a game in hand over Bayern Munich and still unbeaten this season and a surprise member of the side with the highest average rating in the entire league. And why has Haaland not scored more than seven? We'll talk about that as well. Um, so the, st the season started... Oh, Tragedy, viewers. Tragedy occurred. We had to sign Eric Garcia frantically. And the reason that happened is that Akanji, who was going to be a major part of our defensive unit uh, this season, got a big, big injury. Damaged cruciate ligaments, was spent five to seven months out injured. Still got two to five left on that as well. Of course, it'll be between that margin. It takes a long time to recover from that sort of injury. And obviously, isn't very good news for us. Um, but fortunately, we've managed to bring in Eric Garcia and Zagadou and Hummels have stayed fit for the majority of the season. So that's made things a little bit less stressful. As far as the team goes then, system-wise, we've changed it a little bit from the system that started off originally. Um, and you can see there, Haaland sitting up top uh, so far this season. 17 goals. Uh, if I just move my face a moment, viewers, just so you can see uh, what I want you to see behind me. If you look down at the very bottom there, um, you can see uh, three starts in the Bundesliga for Alan Hahn this year. Not had any major injuries. Five starts in the Champions League. Six goals from him in that one. Um, but in those three starts for us in the league, six goals, which is really, really impressive. And uh, yeah, hopefully we see the best of Haaland. And let's explain then why. And it's quite a funny reason why, really. I, I ended up playing Haaland in all the Champions League games. And for whatever reason, based upon his physical attributes, you'd think this wouldn't be the case. He just started to tire really quickly and has had similar issues as have most of the squad, whether it's the way we're playing or or what, I don't really know. Um, so as a result, hasn't been playing a huge amount of football in the league. That said, every time I bring Erling Haaland off the bench in the league, he seems to score. We start with Zlatan in most games and Zlatan's record for us in the league has been absolutely fine. Four goals in seven is exactly what you're looking for for a £3.5 million player. In fact, that's probably above what we were expecting, right? Um, but having the impact of Haaland, who definitely suits the way we play more, than Zlatan. That pace is, is very, very crucial. It'll be interesting to see if we're given money in the January and if I decide to get someone who's a little bit more like Haaland just in case we have any issues. Um, but you can see, if you, if you sort of highlight it there, um, goals per 90, he's getting 1.59 <laughs> so far this season. 17 goals in the 10 starts that he's had. A lot of people have I've known this for a while. He is a phenom on Football Manager and this year is no different to that. His XG is only 6 .9, sorry 9.6 and he's got 17 goals. It's been... Yeah, pretty outrageous from Erling. He's been really, really good. I say Zlatan as well has put in a shift that Realm required. So the two of them seem to be working off each other very nicely. Zlatan goes in, batters them a little bit, gets the odd goal, and then Haaland comes on a little later. And uh, yeah, it's the Haaland show almost every single time. But that said, there's, there's a man that I want to focus on, a man I want to talk about, and Marco Royce is that guy. Like, for whatever reason, playing him in this, this Trequatista role behind Haaland, behind Zlatan, slightly off... Uh, where, I, where we had him originally, of course, out on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, depending on where I thought he was best. In fact, I think he started on the left, didn't he, last episode? We've moved him across, playing him in behind, and a renaissance for, for Marco Royce. He's had five Man of the Match awards in the 10 games that he's played. He's on a 7.47, four goals, five assists, and he's an absolute nuisance for teams that he's coming up against, especially in the Bundesliga. Um, crops up all the time. And the reason we changed things, right, because, again, we started off with two wide players and it, and it made sense, right? There was a nice balance to the team. But what I was finding was every single chance we tended to create was it looking 
almost exactly the same. And it was nice intricate play, but it was becoming easy for teams to defend against. You move, you move them inside, you create little overloads here, you give more space to Monier on that side, you allow Julian Brandt to play a little bit closer. And with us launching balls forward, up to Haaland, up to Zlatan, I wanted to have someone a little bit closer to him to win those knockdowns and to integrate everyone else in the play. Getting Delaney forward, of course, vital in that. Schulz, Munier, whether it be Guerrero or whoever else that plays in the wide positions. It was crucial that we had someone picking up those loose balls and I found Royce was doing it more often than not in that position and has been so crucial to the successes of our side. Um, the games we've got coming up today, I'm going to play Stuttgart, whether we play another one after that, I'm not sure yet, Werder Bremen after it. Um, there's... <laughs> The way we're playing, right, so let's let's focus on our league form. Let's talk about this because this is where the focus really. This is what I wanted to, to nail down on. I talked about the 20-game period, right, and that's probably a similar area of where we'll come back in this series. And Dortmund have lost eight games in their first 20 in the Bundesliga, and that was something that I thought we had to eradicate. And I figured with the firepower of Haaland, and it's funny again, I've only started him in three games, it seems, it seems crazy, but Zlatan having a similar level of firepower between them are scoring a plenty of goals. I wanted to make sure we were defensively solid. And that's why the Akanji injury was like, oh, no, hang on, this isn't part of the plan. And it was fortunate that we'd got in Eric Garcia very quickly. Let's take a look in more detail then, just how we compare to the rest of the league in, in what I'm talking about, right? And we come to the analyst report, it's the screen I started on at the very beginning of the video, because I was looking at the scoring charts and the conceding charts as well. And if you take a look at this, I'm not, I'm not in the way too much, am I? No, we're fine. Um, it's passive and clinical in this bottom right-hand corner. And we are having, on average, nine shots a game, around nine shots a game. But our conversion rate of 21% is so far and above. If you compare it to Bayern, right, it's the obvious team to compare it to. We are so far away from them. Even the likes of uh, Leipzig, we are a good 10%-ish better than both of those sides, despite having a far fewer amount of shots. And the, the amount of times we're able to take our chances and give ourselves the leverage in games has been crucial. Lots of late goals, but at the same time, goals that have allowed us... To, say, to, to hold this first position. In terms of conceding on the other side of things, right? We are th the perfect like quality of defence right now. We give up very few chances and the conversion rate for teams that play against us is lower than 8%. So we are giving, again, eight shots per game. Quite e Games are quite even, but it, it's just not been easy to score against us. And the interesting thing about that is that we started this season with two Chocotistas and a Libero. That was sort of like the idea I had. And Emre Shun's role in this team has caused me a lot of problems. No, that, I can only demonstrate that really by showing you this screen. And you can see that he started off as a libero down here, putting in some decent performances. Again, I'm just going to hide myself so you can sort of see it in all its glory. Again, decent performances, really poor against Bayern Munich in that game. And it led me to think, after a couple of suspensions, we have to change this around a little bit. We need to find a way to get him to be working better. And, and for a libero, who is a bit of a ball player and at the same time covering... He wasn't involved as much as I thought he'd be, so I've moved him into other roles, the deep-line playmaker role, the half-back role, the ball-winning midfielder role, and none of them <laughs> seem to be having any impact at all. So we still don't really know what Emre Chan's best role is, whether it's playing him as a libero, but it's quite clearly giving us like a huge amount of defensive stability right now. So to take him out of there or to move that player around and try and get something out of another player, right? We could play an extra player in a forward area, Seems like something I'm just not prepared to do, but also accept the fact that his average rating this season is a 6.73 and probably isn't going to go much higher than that in the league, a 6.68, even lower in the league. So we've got to find a way to get the best out of him. He's a really quality player and having him sit at the heart of that defence right now was quite a nice idea, but ultimately it's not having, like he's not having the impact, but the rest of the team are being allowed to flourish and I guess I'm going to take that, right? But it's really interesting to see how that works out for me. And uh, yeah, again, trying something and it not always working. But we we play such a fluid style, especially offensively. Like we, we a safe fluid style. Once once we've got the ball to a certain position, right? We distribute the ball to the target man. My goalkeeper's instruction is get it up to Zlatan, get it up to Haaland, and then let's work around him, right? And sometimes that produces a lot of great chances, and sometimes it it doesn't. And games are a lot slower, and we have to sort of have that one good chance, which means our conversion rate being as high as it is absolutely crucial and if that drops off then there would be a, a demand on us to create more chances but the way we're playing right now we don't necessarily need it and it's interesting right we're playing direct passing we're, we're playing again the ball's up to Haaland the ball's up to Zlatan we're using what we've got with those guys we're being more expressive we are running at defences with those Trequatistas with the likes of Royce and Sancho and Brandt and whoever else working the ball into the box when we get into those areas but it's about getting the ball further up the pitch getting away from our goal and not trying to spend too long getting it into Delaney getting it into Witzel they are much they are very much support players both going forward and in defence so 
Whether we can keep this going for the entire season is something I'm not too sure about yet. Again, the pressing agency is more urgent, but not at the absolute maximum. Getting stuck in, making challenges. That arguably is why some of our players maybe are a little tired than they need to be. Um, but all in all, it's working really, really well. And system-wise, we seem to have got it just perfect. Like having Whistle on a defensive duty and having Royce be in the attack duty allows Delaney lots of room to manoeuvre in these spaces and gives these two players room to do what they want to do, right? You've got... Witzel playing on this side, allowing uh, Munier to go on that right-hand side. Brandt cutting in, allows Schulz or, or Guerrero to go forward on that side. Um, we'll talk about maybe Schulz and Guerrero at a different point in the in the series. But yeah, having to choose between those two guys um, is proving difficult. And also, the, the other advantage, by the way, of playing Royce in this role is that it suits the young players that are coming through. And Royce is playing and the game's kind of won most of the time. You can bring on a Rainer, you can bring on a Bellingham or a Renier, right? Which we've done here and there, but without having major impacts. But again, everyone in the team seems to be putting in uh, a really good shift. Speaking of which, Stuttgart to come today then. Hopefully you enjoyed that little tactical rundown of the way things are operating. And not only that, we're having success from it. And ultimately, that is the most important thing with this series, that I want to have moments of, it's working, good. And the fact that Royce, who is like the poster boy for Dortmund, is having this, this sort of type of season, you can see that he's almost like a pure finisher. He could play as a striker if, if he needed to. Um, it's just such a thrill for me to see him as part of this team, as, as, as being part of so many great Dortmund sides, it feels like, um, and is now part of mine, and, and a pivotal part too. Uh, right. Let's get into this game then. Stuttgart coming up. Uh, let's run you through. I say run you through the team. All we've done is talk about it. Let's get into the game and uh, see how we go. It's worth observing as we go into this game um, that we've got quite a few players in need of rest. Now, because of the depth in this squad, it's quite it's quite easy for me to change players around a little bit. So we are going to. And we're going to see how some of those players um, interact with the rest of the team. Piszczek probably starts ahead of Paslak in that role. Uh, we've got Royce. And I think this is probably a good chance. Like Bellingham is developing quite nicely. Now, whether he can play the Czech Batista role in quite the same way, um, obviously we would train him there. He's adept at sort of all the same roles in that position. So we're going to give him a go. Uh, Rayner, equally very, very good there. So again, someone that can maybe come off the bench. But Bellingham, being right-footed, being right-sided, makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, and Witzel in the middle. The who, or do we just? I think we probably there's one position that I'm not willing to give up, and that's probably his there, as uh, Emre Shan apparently needs a rest as well. Don't know why. Doesn't really do anything. Right, here we go. That's some of the team. Uh, let's get into this against Stuttgart. And let's hopefully see... Some of the things we talked about, because I think that was great about the Chelsea series, is that I was talking about things, and as we were talking about them, as we were making changes, um, we saw them happen as well. So we'll try and do a very similar thing in this, despite playing on key highlights, of course, so we are a, we are a victim to that. And of course, if we don't see too much occur here, we'll play another game and, uh, and talk through it. But yeah, if you're enjoying this type of series and you're having fun with it, do leave a like on it. And uh, yeah, if you're not really subscribed and you're enjoying uh, this, of course, there's three more episodes to come later this week. So yeah, please get involved and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Right! They're playing a defensive system, very similar to ours. It's going to be difficult for us to find space, but balls in behind to Haaland. Um, it's going to be crucial that he makes those types of runs. This is only a fourth start, a fourth start in the Bundesliga of the 10 games. So um, let's see how he does. Of course, he's better off the bench, maybe. So we should we potentially be concerned by that. Um, no matter what happens today, we will stay top of the table, as a lot of the other sides have already played. Um, I've been using the behind camera view for a few things. Like Long throws have been, of course, a big part of our, our system as well. We've scored a few here and there. Um, let's go to 2D Classic. It's the way that I prefer to watch and analyse what's going on, as very early on, it's uh, it's very, very quiet. It feels like as we've got ourselves a throw. If I slowed this right down, yeah, I was watching a, I was watching a long throw recently in slow motion. As Schulz is going to launch one, actually, towards Haaland. I'm not going to get there. Delaney's going to pick it up. And is there going to be... A moment for a Schulz. Really nice width from the fullbacks. So they've got a few options in the centre. If you can find one, Sancho's there. Could have maybe done a bit better. And that's interesting, isn't it? Where Sancho places himself when... Just I'll pause for the moment. When he's playing as that Czech Batista, he's playing as a wide player. But we know, we've talked about it before a little bit in the last episode, that he's a wide player as much as he's cutting in a lot of the time. And in fact, we can have him sit narrower. And, and in fact, this game, I will do, because I like the fact that early on, Schulz is getting forward and he's going to continue to do that. Giving him that space in the same way that we've got that space on the right side, because Royce isn't playing out there, allows, again, nice balance from the fullback. So I want to see plenty of that. As uh, Sancho's got a free kick, whipped in. Zagadou's there, really great free kick. And Zagadou, uh, second goal of the season, always seems to be a bit of a danger from set pieces and gets himself another one. Really good delivery from Sancho as well. So crucial that you've got decent set piece takers. And Sancho, while not one of the, like, the elite set piece takers in world football, definitely good enough to do things 
like that. 22 minutes gone, and uh, we take a lead, and I'll take a breath. <laughs> I feel like I did a lot of talking there. All right, so you can see straight away as we set up, right? They've just had a goal kick there. Schultz is playing pushed, highly pushed up there. Similar thing with, with pitch check on this side, really like forcing their, their kicks out or their, their balls out to be perfect. And we've got like a three on three at the back, but even if they're firing up to us, right? Hummels, Shan, as I could do, all capable of winning things aerially. And you've got Delaney and Witzel waiting for those knockdowns. Someone like Sancho, again, playing as like this wide Trecratista. You'd think it was the other way around, the way they're stationed, right? Shaw's, though, is nipping in there. He's got Harlan in the centre. Only one real option as it cuts away and the ball forward. But you can see just, just the, the, the these areas that Sancho and Bellingham is on this game specifically are picking up. I do love the way they sit in there and just provide options. Sancho winning it back. Bellingham back on it again into Sancho. Nice, close, intricate play. And we get a goal. I'll tell you what, viewers. It seems, it seems like a dream, doesn't it? <laughs> the way we're talking about it. The way in which they operate. Having Sancho sit a little bit more inside in this game as well. Um... I mean, look at that. Brilliant work offensively, right? It's sort of the pressing that you expect from a Dortmund side, but done in a slightly different way to sort of the typical Gegen press systems that you see normally. It's, it's fascinating. Anyway, brilliant goal, 2-0. Loving it. I tell you, if I don't win a streamer showdown, which is this weekend, coming, coming this weekend, well, I've got, I've got a bit, this tactical bending will be required for that, I think. But you can see just from the XG, we're having like a few shots here and there, four shots, four of our seven shots, sorry, have been on target. And although we're not having a lot of shots in games, we are being clinical with them as we talked about, like, and the stats back that up. It's about the quality of chance. I'm not that interested in creating, like, it's different at Chelsea. Like, we had strikers that needed, it felt like, a lot of chances to eventually be successful. These short corners I've been working on have been a real treat recently. That's not going to work this time. Rather than just doing long ones every time, from the right-hand side, doing shorter ones into the likes of Witzel, trying to keep, create spaces, as uh, they've got themselves a set piece. Berkey does brilliantly. And as we start to sort of fall out of the defensive shape, be interested to see. It'll go long, I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah, he will. They'll play it up towards well. He's aimed for Haaland. Sancho, in fact, has got the knockdown instead. And then Haaland, it's a big tackle on him. I wondered if he was going to be sent off then. And they keep the ball. And you can sort of see the way the box-to-box -box midfielder acts as sort of the fourth man um, when we're pressing, I mean, they've done well here, actually, to be fair. Stuttgart to get the ball away and clear it out. As Schulz there, though, defensively, was doing pretty well. Eventually does win it back. Really good defending from him, one-on-one, -on -one, with the help of Sancho, with the help of Zagadou inside. And Bellingham's first touch is just about good enough. Haaland now, he's got a lot of pace. Can he apply the finish? No, fires it at the goal. That was a very Haaland-esque finish, I feel like. Not on target, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, we might be getting close to the point of allowing Witzel to come off. He was the one player that needed a rest pre-game. But this has been a good example of the way in which we, we play. And you can see, again, not loads and loads of chances. Doesn't really work like that. It's Piszczek. Short corner to Witzel. Give it back to Piszczek. Lay it off. Oh, he's gone straight to Haaland. Wow. Found the, found the space. Found the gap. Haaland's nabbed in there. 18th goal of the season for him. Continues his good record. It's crazy. It's a crazy record. I feel like now he's scored. I should take him off just so his minutes per goal is uh, that little bit lower. But um, yeah, again, really good from Piszczek. Finds Witzel, who just holds it up and has got the quality to find Haaland. The ball is so straight that Haaland is definitely on side. Um, and at that point, I think the time to take Witzel off is probably now. Giovanni Reina is going to come on. We're going to put Bellingham slightly deeper. And uh, yeah, everything's going to be fine. 3-0. Uh, Stuttgart, not one of the best sides in the division. Not at all. But this is a really good example of how teams just aren't having good quality chances against us and it's so difficult to create them with the way in which we're playing like those two midfielders are just such an engine room there's a reason they're tired as uh, there it is Dortmund 3 Stuttgart nil. really really impressive result and hopefully we'll have plenty more of those occasionally and it's worth pointing out right there's, there's it's not all positive there are the occasional results that like we've drawn a couple of games it's probably worth mentioning those. Um, as well as the Bayern Munich game, which I realise I haven't touched on and should do. In these games against teams like Frankfurt, a little bit unlucky to a degree. Conceded a late goal. Zlatan scored very early. Sancho went off and then we conceded almost straight away. Um, in these games, away from home, us not creating more is costing us, right? And that's going to be a theme sometimes. And I suspect that was the same thing against Hertha as well. Yeah, pretty limited opportunities. You could argue we're a touch unlucky. They've had one shot on target. Like it's maybe just one of those games. The game against Bayern Munich, just to round things off for today's episode, um, the way in which I stopped them, I analysed the first game we played against them and I realised that Lewandowski had a huge impact in how he basically did everything in terms of the forward line for Bayern Munich. So I got Emre Schan to man-mark him. And while Emre Schan's average rating wasn't that high, it's the reason we won that game. He still got a goal, like, and, I, and I'll show you the goal that he got. It's the one time in the entire game, it feels like, that Lewandowski got away 
but we limited their opportunities, which was going to be crucial. Um, but it's a good example of how sometimes having a player like Emre Shan, who's not a natural centre-back, is a problem. You keep an eye on Lewandowski's movement. He just runs off Shan this one time and puts it into the back of the net. And occasionally, with a player of Lewandowski's quality, that'll happen. So... As much as I think it's going well, and there are some real positives to take from the series and the save, um, it's worth giving a bit of balance that sometimes I will get outdone by Lewandowski. Still beat him, though. We'll take it. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, I said it before, please do leave a like on it. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow for the middle part of this. Uh, the January window will sort of get towards the end, but it'll be that 20-point period so we can compare ourselves against what they really did in real life. Of course, without Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, uh, Ibrahimovic, but with a kanji. So... There. Right, <laughs> take care of yourselves, gang. See you later. Goodbye. Oh, I should say at the very end as well, um, there's a Discord channel for Do It Better. If you want to come along and share your Dortmund story with me, please do. Uh, it's discord.gg slash Dr. Benji. Come and get involved.